Oh boy, oh boy, here we go again. Back to work here tonight. Hope you guys made some money out there today. It's back to work tonight, though. Tuesday evening, getting ready for a very big end of the month Wednesday trading session. We got end of the month volatility. We got big Fed speaker tomorrow afternoon. We got some big news tomorrow morning. We have a lot to cover in a very important video newsletter. And of course, I have a lot of great trades I'm tracking for tomorrow. I'm going to go over all my favorite trades in tonight's video to make sure you get a game plan to make some money. Money going to the end of the month on Wednesday. Uh, as always, before we jump in and get this party going tonight, make sure you subscribe to our channel. That way you don't miss tomorrow night's video upload. And I really appreciate you guys tuning in tonight. If you enjoy the video as much as I enjoy making it, do me a favor. Will you hit that like button? I appreciate you guys tuning in and supporting this YouTube channel. But enough of the intro, right? Let's get ready for Wednesday. Wednesday's got a lot, boy, a lot of news, a lot of great opportunities setting up. And I'll tell you, a lot of traps, boy, lots of traps. Traps. And you'll see tonight, as we go over these charts tonight, lots of great bull traps and bear traps and uh, running stops and using stops as fuel is kind of really where the, the key to making money will be here for tomorrow. Lots of trading ranges right now, right? Range on the S&P, range on the NASDAQ, and of course, range on the oil. Anytime we see ranges, ranges act like magnets. We're trading rotation. We're trading failures and traps, right? And we're trading breakouts. So there is no shortage of money-making opportunities on all three of these markets. And I'm going to give you guys a roadmap uh, to make some money on this. Before we jump in, though, let's just all get on the same page here. Tomorrow, of course, is the end of the month. And so we do expect there to be an uptick in volatility over the next 24 to 48 hours, right? The end of the month into a new month, we always get a little bit more volatility. We also, of course, have three real big kind of news headlines tomorrow, right? First one is the GDP at 8.30 Eastern Time. Second one is that JOLTS report, the job openings, layoffs, and transfer survey. And the third one is that Fed speech combined with that beige book later on in the session. We get Jerome Powell speaking. He's the head of the Fed tomorrow at 1.30. You could, you could easily argue that the, the choppy markets we've seen the last week or so have probably have most people waiting to hear what he's going to say tomorrow afternoon. So we definitely have that being almost a climax for the end of the month. And of course, everyone's going to be listening in to see what he says about inflation and, and raising rates. They've got one more FOMC announcement coming in mid-December, and everyone right now is wondering what the Fed will do. Will they pivot and go from 75 basis point to 50 basis point? So that's the big headline for tomorrow. So 8.30 is that GDP number. 10 o'clock is that JOLTS report. And again, the afternoon delight tomorrow. We've got Jerome Powell speaking at 1.30 Eastern time. Now, of course, we're also watching China very closely right now. We saw a lot of stuff happen over the weekend. You know, they've got that zero COVID policy. Policy, the lockdowns, the the protests, right? All the stuff happening. I'm sure most of you guys have seen the videos online about these huge protests in China. It seems like China has kind of bent a little bit to this and made some concessions. This is definitely something we're watching uh, as it develops later on this week. And let's not forget about OPEC. Boy, we heard a lot about OPEC this afternoon, uh, talking about more production cuts going into the end of the month, end of the year. So that will definitely be something that we're watching here for tomorrow. So keep that on your radar, right? China and the lockdowns and, of course, OPEC and that rumor of some more production cuts definitely on our radar. Those are some kind of known unknowns for tomorrow. So GDP 830, Jolts report at 10. We got the old, we, we got the Fed speaker at 130 and then we'll be hear more from China and OPEC. And tomorrow morning, don't be late to our trade room, 8 o'clock Eastern time. We've had a great month of November. Looking forward to finishing up with you guys firmly in the green tomorrow morning. Back to our charts though. The news is great. The news uh, will be a good catalyst for us here tomorrow, but the money is made on the charts, and I'm going to go over all my favorite potential money-making trades for tomorrow that we get a game plan. Uh, I'm going to cover all different types of tactics throughout the entire lesson tonight, so make sure you watch all the way to the end because I do try to save the best stuff later on in the video. So uh, grab some notes. If you got any questions, drop those questions in the comment section below. Let's go S&P. We'll go NASDAQ, and of course, we'll finish up on the crude oil here for tonight. Now, over 
over on the S&P, boy, the S&P looks a bit confused right now, doesn't it? It's, it certainly does. And this is one of the big reasons why I said a lot of potential traps in this market right now. And we'll talk about how to make some money on those traps right now. There are some pretty key insights that are kind of tipping us off to where the best money making trades are likely going to be here uh, for tomorrow. The first one is this range and a pendulum swing. Ultimately, the market began with a bearish move into a trading range. The mark, you'll notice, went basically sideways, popped up, and then ran lower with a very strong move down. Now, you would think that strong move lower would have the bears coming in and retesting that low. But you see what's happening right now? They're kind of hanging out right on that pendulum swing. Get rid of that there for a second. The amount we go above the range is the equal to the amount below the range. Very interesting, right? How that trading range, and of course, we do a lot of this in our trade room with ranges, right? But the amount above the range, the amount below the range, you know, that strong move down, that strong move down for the bears. Remember, anytime we see a strong move in one direction, we know they're going to want to retest that low. And so something is obviously holding those bears back right now. And it looks like it's that pendulum swing. So really at this point, at this point, for the most part, you would anticipate now these buyers trying to rotate this market back higher. And of course, when we get to levels of resistance above the range, range of course are magnets. And so we definitely can see some possible bull traps. I love some bull traps. Some buyers get stuck up there for the short back down again. Love some shorts off the high. We may see a breakout going higher. So we'll talk about what a breakout looks like as well. But right now, a nice bull trap off that high would be a very desirable trade here. So expecting these buyers now as they're holding off that pendulum to rotate higher and looking for some shorts coming back down off that high here. As we go lower, if we go lower here, if we go lower without going higher right Right now, that's a very bearish clue, right? It's a very bearish clue. We should want to rotate higher at this point. If they don't, that's, again, something is wrong here. And we'll, we'll obviously see this being quite a bearish clue here. We do have some reversals off this low. I'll talk about one particular reversal pattern off this low. But if we go higher here, though, breakouts, right? Breakouts are definitely on our radar going lower. The next big objective going lower here for the bears is down around that 39.12 and a half level. So just be aware, right? Just be aware of that as we, as we go lower. So I'm going to talk about the up the down, the sideways here tonight, and we'll make sure we have every base covered here. Now, I want to talk about breakouts going lower. That is where some pretty easy money can be made going lower here. But let's talk about the move going higher here at first, and we'll circle back, and we'll talk about going lower here in a moment. If we can get this thing to go higher, I've got a lot of key levels of resistance up overhead. In fact, you could say it goes all the way up to that 4,000 big round number. As we go higher, here, the key is going to be remember this trading range. The range is the magnet. And so we want to basically look for bull traps, right? Look for ways to trap in these buyers. From what I can tell, this trend line, that trend line is going to be kind of the biggest variable right now for this short. And the reason I kind of mentioned that is because, for example, you know, as we go higher here, I would love to get some buyers to come in, try to buy this pullback and look for some shorts, right? Going back down but we've got that trend line right in my face here right now. So the best way to sell at a resistance level above a range, right? Remember, ranges are magnets. They want to rotate and then drop back down into that range. The best way to sell this is to look for a bull trap, like I mentioned earlier, right? And to do that, I want to see buyers try once. I want to see buyers try twice. And I can look for that, what, what, what I call a, a trap setup or a two-try failure with a trap trap set up. You guys learn that stuff in our free trading classes, right? So a bull trap off that high. And then again, we can look to pick it up now as it rolls below that trend line. So on a relatively shallow pullback, on a relatively shallow pullback right here, again, anticipating this rotation going higher up into resistance, looking at this as a bearish mark with that strong move down, trapping those buyers, use that bull trap, right, to sell short. You guys learn this stuff 
in that free trading course on the website. Now, if we get lucky, if we get lucky, we'll get a nice strong rotation going higher here. There are three ways I can short this pop because again, we're going to be at resistance above a trading range acting as a magnet. Three ways in which I can short that pop. If we do see a strong pop higher, that will be a lot of momentum now for the buyers. Here's one way to short this. A crown reversal off the high. Buyers once, buyers twice. That trap high, that red candle, that signal candle closing below the moving average, that is what we call a crown reversal. It's basically getting up into resistance, trapping in these buyers, and then ultimately using their stops right as fuel for some nice easy profit going lower. That's one way to short that strong move going higher. Another way to short this is a double top reversal. So for example, we make that run higher. The buyers come back. They pull back, and they may not blast up for a full-blown reversal or full-blown breakout, which we'll talk about in a moment, they simply go back up, they retest the high. Now, as you guys learn about in our free trading classes, anytime we see a strong move in one direction, we're expecting that retest, right? That's why it's so, uh, it's so surprising that that strong move down wasn't able to retest that low. So now we pop up, the buyers come in, they hold that pullback, and they retest off that high, mission accomplished. Now let's see if we can get some rookies. Let's see if we can get some more inexperienced traders now to commit and buy into these highs. If I can get buyers to come in and try a couple times off, again, resistance above the top of that trading range, think now about where their stops are, right? And use those stops as fuel for that short back down again. Look for that nice strong signal closing below the moving average and that will give us that short. Now, as I talk about in the free trading course, you want to trade the turn, right? The amount we go above the range will oftentimes be equal below the range. So we got more money to make as we go lower here. After we get that buyer failure, then what you want to do is, is find that new channel by drawing off the lows we draw channels backwards and then mark the channel off the high and then any of the entry patterns, right? So bull traps or buyer failures, any of the entry patterns you guys are learning in that free trading course, I can grab that short off the high, which reminds me, we've talked a lot about traps and failures, drawing channels backwards. I want to I want to make sure you guys really get a, get a good deep dive into this strategy. I know that most of you guys and gals have taken the free class. You're using all these setups to make money right now. But if you're one of the few folks watching tonight who haven't taken that free class, what I'll do is I'll put a little pop-up link there for you in the upper right-hand corner. Grab that link and take the free trading course because the strategy that I teach in that free class will show you a simple trick to know where the winners are going to be each day so you know where to look for them. And I teach you four simple entry patterns to help you start making money on your account. If you're missing the best trades each day, if you're taking too many losses right now, if you're not getting the results you want, grab that link, right? Take that free class. It's perfect for someone trying to make the jump into full-time trading. And again, if you don't see the link up top there, I'll put all the important links in the description of this YouTube video. That way, right, that way, once you take that free class, you'll learn more about things like crown reversals. You'll learn more about double tops and then two try failures into finding that new channel and that short off the high. Really like that type of bull trap or failed breakout above the high of that trading range. Now, the next big question, which I'm sure you're wondering right now, is at what point does a strong move going higher at what point does that become a breakout? You know, when do we start buying this thing as we're going higher? And the reality is we have to make our way up into these areas of resistance. The excuse me. The buyers need to come in, right, and hold that pullback and then jump, right? They've really got to hold that pullback and blast, right? They've really got to get that really strong move. And you'll notice, right, you'll notice here right now the pendulum swing off that low, up around this high. It just doesn't look very easy right now for this thing to reverse, move up, 
hold that pullback, and then jump. If they can really jump, right, and rip this thing going higher, then we have a breakout. Then we have a bullish trend now. What I'll do is, is I'll mark off the high. Let me back this out a little bit here for us, right? So we take out that high. We pull back to that 21 moving average. We jump, right? And we really rip. You know, we really rip and run higher here. Again, lots of overhead resistance. They've really got to give us that strong breakout. If they can hold that pullback, I'm not going to buy that pullback, but I will gladly go out, find that new channel, mark off that high. Again, we draw the channels backwards, mark off that high, mark off that low, and as I always say, you want that first test, right? You want that first test off the low of that channel. And again, this could be a bear trap. This could be a, a seller failure pattern. Could be a pullback combination pattern. All the entry patterns you guys are learning and making money with right now in that free trading course. So keep an eye on that. Again, right now, doesn't seem very realistic, but we get a bunch of big news tomorrow. And there's definitely potential. This rotation off the low holds that pullback and blasts into a new bull trap trend here. The next big objective overhead for the buyers, in addition to, of course, that 4,000, is, of course, that 4020 level overhead. And we get that the big, big, big buyer's objective is at 40, 50, and three quarters. Now, there's one more type of short off the high, and you guys hear me talk about these ones quite a bit here. So we talked about the move up and the failure. If for some reason we get a V top off the high, I've, I forgot to mention this earlier, right? We rotate going higher. Sometimes what happens is, is we don't get any one, two, we don't get any failure setups or bull traps off the high. Sometimes what happens is it literally runs up, runs into resistance, and then V tops and begins to grind back down again. If that's the case, very simple. Mark off that low, right, new trend line, find that channel, you got it off that high, and then simply drill down, find those prior swings, and don't miss that first test off the high. Make sense? Right, so again, lots of resistance above the range, lots of great shorts setting up off the high, bull traps, or if we get that situation where it pops up and there's so many bears up that want to sell short and it V tops, watch that kind of V top into a grind down and then grab that short off the top of that channel. Bears, of course, want to go back and retest that low. Now, as we go lower, if we go lower here, right? If we go lower, again, get a little trend line coming in here at that low. If we can get this market now going lower, there, like I mentioned earlier, something will be, well, it'll be very bearish, right? It'll be very bearish if we do end up going lower here. So the only way we can really safely buy this thing will be to take out that low. I've marked up the breakout leg as the measuring leg to find my measured move. So lots of support, right, down here, 39.41. 39, 37 there. So lots of support there. We know, though, if the market goes lower, the bears want to take out that big low. That 39, 12 half is that big, big low from just before the Thanksgiving holiday. There are basically three ways to trade this as we go lower. One is that crown reversal. So we take out that low. Mission accomplished, right, for the bears. The bears want to retest that low. And now we get some rookies coming in. Now the rookies come in. They try once, they try twice. Now, you're going to want a crown reversal on this one. You're not going to want to be too aggressive on this one because, again, it will be very bearish at that point. That big rotation off the high, that strong move down, not, not, a, not a great location here to get pretty aggressive. There will be times to get aggressive like that short off the high, and this will definitely will not be one of those. Let those bears try a couple times, and I really like to look for those little bear traps, right? Right below that prior swing. You'll see a lot of these, right? They'll go lower. Bears try once. Bears try twice. You'll see a little trap below that low. These oftentimes produce some very, very good reversals. So keep an eye on that crown reversal pattern off of that low. But don't hold your breath, right? Don't hold your breath. If we do take out that low, there's just as much of a chance here. The bears come in, hold that pullback off the 21, 
jump running lower there. And of course, this now is that same one, two, three breakout pattern we just talked about. One, two, three, that strong move down. We know where the market wants to go. Now it's a matter of simply finding that new trend line, marking off that new channel, drilling down, finding those prior swings. Prior swings are where traps live. Get above the moving average for a buyer failure, maybe a pullback combination. If this, if all of this is a foreign language to you, not to worry, grab that link up there in the upper right-hand corner or in the description and take that free trading course. And you'll learn a lot about traps, failures, and pullback combos. Big objective, of course, there at that 39.12 and a half here. One last, one last scenario to keep in mind here, if we do go lower, is that pop and grind. If it was a takeout that low and begin to grind as we go lower here, these are even easier. Mark a trend line off those lows, bring it up around those highs, find those prior swings. I like the prior swings myself personally because that's usually where the best entries are going to be. But, you know, again, when you get those little pop and grind channels like this, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Find that channel by drawing backwards off the lows and grab your bull trap, grab your buyer failure, grab one of those price action setups you guys are learning in that free trading course. And then again, the big bear objective at 39.12 and a half. So a little bit confusing chart, right? The key right now is, is that pendulum swing holding. Can we get up for that reversal back down, right? Or do we end up sinking back lower, possible reversal off the low or that breakout out, right running lower here pretty simple game plan but again a little bit more complicated than normal here got any questions drop those questions in the comment section below how about some nasdaq here NASDAQ is usually pretty similar to the S&P. This one you can see here is quite different on the NQ tonight. There are three ultimate kind of key insights here uh, on this NASDAQ. One of them is a very strong move down. Anytime we see a strong move in one direction, we expect a pullback and a retest of that level. Anytime I see a strong move in one direction, I like to respect that momentum. We talked about that more on the S&P. Second thing here now, now is this bearish trading range, right? A bear market, right? Strong bear market into a trading range. What does a range tell us? A range tells us that levels of resistance, resistance, resistance overhead are going to be areas where bears are going to be looking for shorts. This part is very similar that we talked about on the S&P. It's just the S&P has that rotation coming off of that low, which gives the buyers a little bit more juice behind them, right, on the, on the S&P. The NASDAQ here, looking at least for right now, looking pretty bearish at this point. And you'll notice, too, that trend line I've got coming in. That trend line, just like on the S&P, if all we get is a shallow pullback here, we're going to have to be careful to kind of time the entry properly to avoid that trend line. So knowing that is the case, right, key components here, bear market, into a trading range, short the pops, right? And watch out for that trend line. Pretty, pretty simple idea, right? Pretty simple idea. On a shallow pullback, which is great because again, you'll notice the amount below the range is projected there above the range. So we've got plenty of reasons. You could easily say that is a prior low as well. So lots of reasons to like really this whole area, really. This whole area really is one big kind of resistance zone. The problem is that trend line coming in. So if we can get that pop up, I'd like to be a seller, but I can't just, you know, what I would what I would normally do is I would normally simply go, okay, let's let's see if these buyers like back here right? Let's see if buyers come in, see if they try to buy it. And if they buy it, I can just sell into those stop losses. Now that might work, you know, it might work, but the, the reality is whenever I see one of those trend lines in my way, I like to look for those trap entries, right? Because they're going to give you the best possible entry because you're selling by definition, you're selling, you know, relatively high at that point, right? So this is, in this case, it's kind of a, it's a two try failure, right? You could also call this a crown reversal, but I need some sort of trap entry, right, for that short going back down again. That really is not the most desirable trade, right? The much more desirable trade here would be going even higher. I'd love to get this thing to go up. Now, whenever we see a really big, big breakout or a big, deep pullback, remember, you got to be careful with momentum on these, right? So if it does give us a real strong break going higher, 
it doesn't mean we're a bull market yet. The buyers have to hold the pullback and, and blast, right? What it does mean, though, is is I have to give those buyers the benefit of the doubt, which in this case, right, we'll, we'll, we'll use that two-try rule. Let them try once. Let them try twice. Think about where their stops are, right? Think about where their pain is, as I teach it in my video classes, right? Think about where those buyers are going to be waving the white flag, where their stops are, and just sell right into those stop losses. Now, again, I like to go out and look for that follow-up trade off the high of that new channel, this will have to be a trap in this scenario, though, because you're going to want to get in above that trend line, right? So those are some scenarios. We talked about this briefly on the S&P, right? So we pop up, trap in those buyers. Like I said, lots of traps to look forward to tomorrow because of these ranges. And because we get a bunch of news tomorrow, we may definitely see some of that stuff, right? So popping up, trapping those buyers, use their stops as fuel for that run going higher. And if we can get it to work, you know, this will all depend on where that trend line is and kind of where the entry will be. If we can get it to work, though, I always like that little hidden channel and that first test off the high of that channel. And obviously, I'm, you know, I'm trying to simplify it right now to keep the video short here tonight. I'll go into more details of how we actually look for the entries inside of that free trading course linked up in the upper right-hand corner or down the description as well. And then, of course, as we go higher, if, if we, you know, like on the S&P, right? If we really get that run going higher, okay, it will, it will probably be a pretty bull market at that point. So if we do get that run going higher, this is exactly Exactly where a crown reversal comes in, right? Because again, if we make a huge rip going higher, they're going to want to retest the high, right? So let those buyers try once, let them try twice. You're going to need that trap high, okay, in this situation because the strength of this move is so strong that as it goes lower, you have to worry about more buyers coming in, right? If it's really strong going higher, I can't just use one try to try and sell lower on this because as it goes lower, there'll be more buyers there, right? And they're trying to run this thing back to retest the high. Make sense? What I need is, is I need that trap high, right? I need that trap entry and these extreme kind of breakouts because then we're already in the green on that trade by the time we get more buyers coming in and buying it back up. Does that make sense, right? That's why, that's why I can look for a two try failure and sell right Right there but if we really get that rip going higher right if, we rip, if that if that really really rips and runs higher we have to assume those buyers are going to keep on buying until they retest that high to avoid that little little bear trap if you will i want to use that crown reversal right that trap high that's the way you trade this before we get that retest right and then of course if they do go up right if they do go up and try a couple times and retest the high perfect right now it's mission accomplished for the buyers and now what i can do is is go now rope in some of those rookies right the smart money traders professional traders they're going to buy low inexperienced traders they're going to come in they're going to buy right into that high and we got them right where we want them range below big time resistance up overhead here once those buyers commit now we can sell short right into those stop losses same idea right to try failure and then grab that new channel and you definitely don't want to miss that short off the high of that channel right so strong move up they retest when they retest we no longer have to worry about so many buyers anymore we can trap in buyers use their stops as the entry and then trap, failure, pull back as we go. And just like as I mentioned before on the S&P, you know, if they were to, for example, get all the way up here, hold that pullback and really blast, right? Like really, really jump through that high. Now it's a reversal, right? Now we have that big time reversal here. We can mark off that new channel high, find that channel low, go drilling down, right? Find that prior swing or find any of the entry patterns off of that low. Where would this bull channel or where would this bull reversal try to be going here? The next big objective overhead, we've got that, what's that? 11786, 11788 level overhead and the real big bullish objective on the NASDAQ, 119. 
33 up to that 11 9 63 even you know again not not very likely right now but this could easily change we get a bunch of big news coming tomorrow uh news tomorrow pretty much throughout the entire day here so again as we go higher can they hold it and break out and reverse or will we get that bull trap right and that short back down again I'll be hoping for the bull trap. That's a pretty easy short there. We'll look for that tomorrow in our trade room. As we go lower, right? As we go lower. Now, the good news about the buy side is there's a range right there, right? Ranges, of course, they act like magnets. So remember, very bearish this point, right? If I want to be a buyer down here, I need to get that crown reversal, right? I need to get that one, two, that trap, right? And go from there. That's the best way to buy it when you're trying to go well against that momentum. Or, or we have to wait for that pop-up, that retest. Once they retest, then we go into that one, two, grab those stops, right, and buy from there, right? So those are the, that's the safest way to buy off of that low. Obviously, again, we're very bearish at this point, so I have to use those sellers, use their stop losses, right, as fuel for that punch going higher. And as you can see, we do a lot of that, right? We do a lot of that in our trade room. Using stops as fuel, it's really kind of the easiest money you're going to make, in my opinion, in these markets. Now, what if we keep going lower, right? What if we break down, we pull back to that 21 moving average, and the bears are like, no, 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 we're, we're going lower here, right? They jump off that moving average. Again, we talk a lot about this on this video, right? One, two, blast, okay? Now, we break out of that trading range. I can find that new channel low. What I'll do in these situations is, is I'll pin them up around those highs, right? Find those prior swings, get those bull traps, get those buyer failures off the moving average, right? Use those stops as fuel, et cetera, et cetera. Where does the market want to go if we break down, right? If we break down, the next levels below us are 321 and three quarters. I've got 253 and a half. And the real big bear objective here is the 11, 231 and a quarter as we go lower. There are a lot of ways to trade, to trade breakouts. One is a failed breakout with that crown reversal pattern, right? That's one way to trade a breakout, a failed breakout. Another one is that strong pop that pull back to the 21 moving average, that jump off the moving average, one, two, three, breakout. We mark off that low, mark off that high, and sell that first test off of that high. I'm not going to go over all the entry patterns right now, but you guys are learning those inside that free trading course. Another one is that pop and that grind going lower. These are even easier. Mark off that low, mark off that hidden channel high, right? See, so draw the channel backwards and then go out and go, okay, find those prior swings. Same idea, right? I want that first test off the high of that channel. Would love it if we came back and used that prior low, right? I mean, that would be even better. You know, get that, get that pop up, right? Get that pop up above that channel, above the moving average. Buyers come in, try to buy that pullback. They're walking right in front of a freight train. They're walking right into a bull trap. I love those types of shorts where you've got all of that momentum running lower. It pops up. Buyers try to buy it for whatever reason. doesn't really matter. And we sell into those stops. Target, of course, back at that low. Leave a runner down to that next big level down below us. So again, no shortage, right? No shortage of ways to make money in the NASDAQ. Hopefully, we'll get this thing to break out, reverse, and back down again. That would be my favorite trade for tomorrow. But again, we get a bunch of a bunch of news coming out tomorrow. So you want to keep yourself kind of flexible as far as what might be coming down the pipe here. Last but not least here, let's wrap things up here on the oil here tonight. Oil is a pretty simple, you know, kind of kind of game plan, pretty straightforward here tonight. We have a bull market into a trading range. And of course, anytime we have a, a kind of a bullish bias into a trading range, we know that buyers are going to be buying below the range and trying to make a run back higher. We can then use the amount we go below that trading range as a level of resistance up overhead. So really at this point, bull market, range bound market, we break out, strong move down for the bears, right? They're going to want to try to retest that low, but they've tried a couple times already. 
Look at that beautiful two try failure right there. It's a little one, two, a little trap low. How many times we talked about that pattern so far on this video here tonight, right? You know, strong move down, trapping the bears a couple times, use their stops as fuel, right? Again, we've seen that a couple times tonight on this on this video. So they're trying now to rotate this thing back up. The buyers, of course, want to retest that big high, right? Buyers would love to get up into that pendulum swing, right? The amount below to the amount above. So if we know how ranges work, what should happen is we should go higher here. And as we get up into those high, this is exactly where I can look for bull traps, right? To fade back down again. Love that idea, right? Especially up around top of that triangle, up around that pendulum swing. So really like that breakout failure. Again, that bull trap above that high. Or think about it, right? If we get that breakout going higher, if they could hold that pullback and blast off that moving average, that's a breakout. Now, remember, keep in mind, this isn't a guarantee they hold that breakout if we go higher here, right? But if they can hold it, then we find that new channel, right? And we're and we're buying off the low of that of that new channel. You can see I keep things pretty simple, right? I get a breakout, a breakout's gonna hold, right? They have to hold that pullback. If they can hold it, we find now a new trend channel and we're looking to buy off the low. Where's the next big bull objective? 82.36, you know, 82 even area up there. That's our next big buyer's objective. And from there, it's wide open spaces up to 85. As we go lower, right, if we go lower here, this is, again, like we talked about on, on the S&P, right? If we go lower, something's wrong, okay? If we, if we go lower, something's wrong. The market in all reality, besides there being a little trend line coming down overhead, Right right now, this market, because of this bull market, right, this bullish range, we should be going higher and look for that short back down or that breakout going higher. If they if they fail, right? If they fail here, I'm not really interested in buying off that low. This would be a major failure for those buyers. And so if we do go lower, we're definitely thinking about those breakouts, right? Going lower here. The bears have one thing on their mind right now to get back to that 7360, right? That kind of panic drop that we saw coming in after the holiday, right? 73 60 is a big objective going lower here. So, you know, without without repeating myself too badly here on this, a lot of this is going to be the exact same, right? We go up. That's a lot of bullish momentum. I would definitely be careful picking a top on this. Let those buyers try once, try twice. I like the crown reversal before the retest, right? Love the crown reversal or pop up, pull back, Buyers come in, they're not holding and ripping it higher, but they're taking it back to retest the high. Now we got the rookies trapped in, right? Now we go one, two, use that two try failure. Think about selling into those stop losses and get that thing running back down into that range. Find that new channel low, mark off that high. One of my favorite combinations in our, in our morning trade room every morning, 8 o'clock Eastern time. Strong move up, double top, trapping the buyers, grab that short off the top of that channel, or or again, right? Or again, they, right, they pop it up, they hold that pullback, they blast and rip it right through that top of the range. Again, I can't buy that first pullback, right? Not with a range below me, not with resistance, resistance, resistance above me. They have to prove to us they can hold that. Once they do, then we can go in and call this a new trend, find that new channel, right? You'll learn a lot about channels and how to know when it's a trend and when it's a range. You'll learn that stuff inside that free trading course, right? So I love, love breakouts, but I never trust them. Right, got to prove to us they want that breakout. And then as we go lower, right, as we go lower, uh, do we see like a pop and a grind, right? Does it pop and grind down? If it does, draw that trend line, find that channel, mark those swings, and don't miss that first test is the best test, right? Could be a bull trap, buyer failure, any of them will work off of that high here. Again, if we don't go back up, if we don't get up to retest these highs here, if it simply rolls over, that has to be seen as a major, major failure there for those buyers. So take out that low, make sure they either keep grinding down or make sure they pull back and blast 
off of that low, right? One, two, jump. Remember, it's not enough just to see a strong move down. There's always a chance these bears will fail and go back into the range. I just don't like that trade in this environment because there'll be a trend line coming down. It's a big time failure there for the buyers. So I'm not a huge fan of that long, right? I would rather see the bears hold that pullback, jump off the 21, find that new channel, and then we can definitely get excited about that short off the high of that of that new channel. All right. So looking for that one, two, three breakdown, right? That entry off the high. And again, any of the entry setups you guys are learning in that in that free trading course. All right. So we'll see who wins the battle tomorrow. Again, we've got a lot going on right now with big news tomorrow. We got that GDP number, the Jolts report. Uh, of course, we got Powell tomorrow afternoon end of the month and we're still going to be listening in for more updates you know i mean you know uh, the, the situation right now with opec opec talking about cutting production in december uh, covid lockdowns a lot of stuff impacting oil right now so very much news driven this could definitely change with some updates out of opec here tomorrow now speaking of tomorrow the game plan is all set be careful of the news tomorrow, right? Be careful of those big news reports kind of peppering the day tomorrow. And don't forget, 8 o'clock Eastern time, the game plan's ready tonight. Tomorrow, we're going to get together and we'll trade the plan together. Uh, we have a great trade room. I have the entire system all ready to go for you. If you're not getting the results that you want out of these markets right now, if you're tired of missing the best trades each day, what are you waiting for? Come out, join me every morning. Let's trade this stuff together. I have the entire roadmap ready for you. Uh, you can find all of the, I'll put all the membership links. I'll put all the free trading class links. I'll put everything you need in the description of the YouTube video. The fastest way to get help if you want help getting registered uh, or joining the free trading courses is to grab the phone, call the office, or use live chat. We're always here to help out, so don't be afraid to, to ring the office or send us a live chat as as well. All right, guys, so any questions, drop those questions for me in the comments section below. But again, the easiest way to get help with getting access to our trade room, any of our video classes, call, use Skype, right, or use that live chat. All right, guys, the game plan is ready. Make some money tomorrow for me, will ya? We'll see you guys tomorrow morning, hopefully in the trade room, 8 o'clock Eastern time. If not, we'll come back tomorrow night and get ready for December the 1st. Got a very busy week coming later on this week. So get some rest. We'll see you tomorrow morning in the trade room. If not, same time, same place, back here tomorrow night. As always, my name is Joseph. Be well, be nice to each other, and be here next time, will ya? Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.